It's time now for an in-depth look at the global markets this afternoon. And for that, I'm joined on the line by Mr. Daniel Yu, global strategist at Keum Securities. Mr. Yu, thank you for coming on today. Thank you for having me today. Well, Wall Street was up on Monday. The Dow almost 1% and the Nasdaq about a th one and a third percent. Uh, talk of recession in different parts of the world seeming to ease a bit. What's the story today? Yes, um, as you know, that there's continuation of talk about the economic recession, and that has resulted into quite a significant shelf price decline for the global equity market. But uh, over the weekend, as well as on Monday, uh, the news of stimulus coming from China and Germany has relieved some pressure onto the global equity market. Uh, stock prices, as you said, um, Dow Jones was up uh, quite significantly by 0.96%. And Nasdaq was up 1.35%. Uh, uh, the central bank of China have said that uh, they will be lowering interest rate uh, through a structural reform for the key interest rate uh, environment. Uh, and this will help to lower the borrowing costs for the major uh, Chinese companies. Uh, also, on Sunday, uh, German finance minister uh, have suggested that Berlin will make uh, significant available money uh, amounting to 55 billion U.S. dollars in terms of extra spending in order to boost the economies. So all these uh, numbers are quite positive uh, to boost the global economic growth, where people are less worried about the economic recession, and that resulted into significant share prices movement uh, in Asia market as well. If you look at Kospi, Kospi was up 1.05%, Kostek was up 2% plus. Uh, Nikkei was up again by 0.55% after 0.7% rise the day before. Uh, Shanghai and Shenzhen indexes, indices were kind of flat after a significant rise on Monday by 2 to 3%. Got it. Well, here in Korea, an interesting story. Uh, investors in certain derivative funds uh, based on bonds in the U.S., Germany, Britain, uh, they're facing huge losses. The thing is, I understand reports say some of these investors thought they were buying the bonds themselves, uh, not derivative products. Uh, the Financial Supervisory Service is investigating. What's happening here? Yes. Um, as you said, um, there has been quite significant uh, losses possible from these DLS and DLF products. Um, due to the global economic recession worries, uh, you have seen quite significant drop of the bond yields for major countries, including Germany and many of European countries. Uh, and local investors could lose uh, about 455.8 billion won, uh, or about 55.4 percent of total investment of 822.4 billion invested into um, L. DLF and DLS. Uh, these products are linked to the foreign interest rate, um, and this seems to be quite uh, worrisome. Uh, if you look at the particularly for German 10-year Treasury bond linked derivative uh, product, it's, uh, DLF, uh, the loss ratio amounts to 95.1%. Uh, this is, you know, it's really causing panic for investors. Uh, and because of this, Financial Supervisory Service decided to conduct a joint investigation um, on the 22nd and 23rd of this week, uh, based on the written statements uh, given by the banks and security firms uh, in introducing this product into the market. Um, according to the FSS on August 19th, uh, these DLFs and DLS sales amounted to 822 uh, uh, 822.4 billion won. Uh, out of that, a uh, significant amount, 89.1 percent, was sold to local retail investors, uh, and this is the key concern for this. Um, I don't think that these investors were uh, realizing that uh, this could have this kind of losses ratios, and, and I think that that's why the investigation will be happening here. I doubt they did see that coming, indeed. Uh, but uh, in terms of Japan, we're now seeing what uh, the export restrictions on Korea mean in practice. Now they've approved a second shipment of one of the materials they had restricted, namely photoresist. What do you think that means in the context of this trade dispute? Sure. Uh, as you have said, uh, the Japanese government has approved additional export of Korean uh, to, uh, to Korea um, to resist one of the key semiconductor materials. Uh, this is the second export license uh, since the three major material export regulations for semiconductors and displays have been announced by Japanese government. Uh, 
Uh, on eighth, uh, Japan approved three month amount, uh, but now this time the approval amount is six months, so it's, it's increasing. Uh, and maybe this is ahead of the meeting with the foreign ministers in Beijing uh, on 21st. Uh, and, and maybe people are estimating that the Japanese attitude has been softened a little, but it's just still difficult to see um, the uncertainty is uh, still there, I think. Um, in any case, uh, worst uh, case seems to be, be over somewhat. Uh, while the Korea's boycott Japanese goods and services, uh, Japanese, uh, Japan trouble seems to be continuing, continuing. Uh, and this dispute between two countries clearly putting pressures on economic growth, uh, for both countries as well as global scale. Um, we think that, um, these two governments will probably come to somewhat of an agreement gradually in the future, given the fact that the economic slowdown is putting a heavy burden for both countries uh, at the current point in time. Very interesting, Mr. Yu. We'll have to leave it there for today, though. Thank you for your insights. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.